Let us sing to the Lord, for he has gloriously triumphed. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, by whose grace those sinners we are made just, and though pitiable made blessed, Stand, we pray, by your works, stand by your gifts, that those justified by faith may not lack the courage of perseverance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After much debate had taken place, Peter got up and said to the Apostles and the Presbyter, My brothers, you are well aware that from early days God made his choice among you that through my mouth the Gentiles would hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, who knows the heart, bore witness by granting them the Holy Spirit just as he did us. He made no distinction between us and them, but by faith he purified their hearts. Why then are you now putting God to the test by placing on the shoulders of the disciples a yoke that neither our ancestors nor we have been able to bear? On the contrary, we believe that we are saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus in the same way as they. The whole assembly fell silent and they listened while Paul and Barnabas described the signs and wonders God had worked among the Gentiles through them. After they had fallen silent, James responded, My brothers, listen to me. Simeon has described how God first discerned himself with acquiring from among the Gentiles a people for his name. The words of the prophets agree with this as is written. After this I shall return and rebuild the fallen hut of, of David. From its ruins I shall rebuild it and raise it up again so that the rest of humanity may seek our Lord, even all the Gentiles on whom my, work, my name is invoked. Thus says the Lord, who accomplishes these things, known from of old. It is my judgment, therefore, that we ought to stop troubling the Gentiles who turn to God, but tell them by letter to avoid pollution from idols unlawful marriage, the meat of strangled animals, and blood. For Moses, for generations now, has had those who proclaim him in every town, as he has been read in the synagogues every Sabbath. The word of the Lord. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to the all the Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world firm not to be moved. He governs the people with equity. 
proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. The Gospel of the Lord. In the Good Shepherd discourses that we've heard for most of our gospel proclamations from last week, Jesus, in those uh, gospel passages, Jesus taught his disciples that the relationship that he has with them is all about a, an intimate, mutual knowing. I know them and they hear my voice. I know them, I speak to them my voice and they hear it and then they come to know me. And he said that that's the kind of relationship that he has with the Father. The Father and I are one. That there is a, a very intimate mutual knowing between the Father and the Son. And that's the kind of relationship that he also wants to enter into with his disciples. Since yesterday, we also have come to know that in that intimate relationship with the Father and the Son, at the center of it is love. It is the self-giving love between the Father and the Son. And in that kind of love, the Father pours out everything that He has into the Son without holding back anything. He teaches Him everything. And again, our Lord Jesus invites His disciples into that communion of love that the Father has with the Son. He invites them to enter into it, and not only to enter, but to remain in that kind of love. And the reason that our Lord Jesus invites them to do that is because it is only through that love, that communion of love between the Father and the Son, that the disciples will come to have the true and full joy that they have been seeking all of their lives. And by extension too, as we listen to this gospel, we are invited to enter into and to remain in that kind of love because it is also only through that love that the true joy that we're looking for here on earth can truly be found. Because that kind of joy that the Lord wants to give us is different from the kind of joy that we know that is given to us by the world. For here in the world, when we think of joy, we sometimes think of it as merely happiness, that feeling or emotion that we feel when something good around us is happening. The problem with happiness that the world gives us is that it's always dictated by external factors. When something is good around us, we feel happy. But when something is bad happening around us, then we lose that happiness. And therefore, when, that external, when those external factors disappear, then we start to lose that happiness as well. But it's different with the kind of joy that the Lord wants to give us because the joy that He gives us is about an interior state of being or an interior state of knowing. And it comes from the knowledge that we receive whenever we are in that communion of love. It's knowing that regardless of what's happening around us, whether the things around us are positive or negative, but we know that there is a God who is always there, who is always present, and who never changes. And having that knowledge in us gives us that unshakable foundation and stability that we need as we continue to exist here in the world. And that is the joy that the Lord wants to give us, to know that when our lives are rooted in the knowledge of Him, 
not, nothing in this world can ever shake us, nothing in this world can ever put us down. And we can only receive that joy when we enter into the communion of love with the Father and the Son, when we choose to remain in that love. And so I think that that's the invitation for us today, to make that choice and to intentionally choose to enter in that communion. And we pray that we will have the grace to do so and receive the, the gift of that communion in our lives to truly give us the full joy that we seek here. Rejoicing in the saving power of God, we gather our needs and present them with courage and with hope. For the Church, the body of Christ, that she may be strengthened and nourished by the Eucharistic food that is her Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are poor and hungry, that they receive the nourishment that they need, physically and spiritually. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, that we may pray to the Holy Spirit for wisdom and fortitude, so we may better proclaim God's word. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us offer our own petitions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, in your infinite kindness, please grant our prayer intentions, both spoken and held in the silence of our hearts, according to your will. We ask all these through Christ our Lord. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant we pray that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, the duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of all to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son and the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us 
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petition, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. O Saluta Risostia, Quei Celipan, 